Yes, you guys, welcome back to another News Daily video powered today by Snickers Protein. Now, throughout this entire January period, I've been teaming up with Snickers Protein to bring you guys the Snickers Protein fan line. So right now, I'm about to answer three questions that were sent my way. Thanks to everyone that participated. Starting with the first one sent by Michael, does Loftus Cheek have a future next season under Tuchel? Now, considering how we are using this 3-4-1-2 system or 3 4 2 one, and seeing how Loftus Cheek is playing at Fulham, playing in an attacking position role, I feel like Tuchel is going to be interested to work with Ruben because he knows the Premier League, uh, he's got ridiculous talent, ridiculous dribbling ability, ridiculous strength too, and he's got those types of qualities that you can definitely work with. So, you know, next season, we want to go for the title. It's really that obvious. So having Ruben back as part of the squads is going to be important for that strength and the harmony. And yeah, I feel like for sure he has a future for next season. Now for the next question that was sent by Cameron. And he wants to know if Haaland is signed. What does this mean for Tammy Abraham and Giroud? Now considering that this could potentially be Giroud's final season with us. Maybe the club are thinking long term. And maybe they feel like Werner isn't necessarily a striker in that role. So I guess... If Haaland was signed, it would come down to him and Tammy competing for a first-team sport. But considering how Tuchel also likes to use two strikers up front, you know, there are going to be times throughout the season where I'm sure both could potentially play together. And for the final question sent by Silver Sun, he wants to know the news surrounding Kempembe and Marquinhos. Now with Kempembe, I'm not really reading any links right now, but with Marquinhos, potentially this could be a very difficult move. Highly likely being that maybe we can't sign him, so... The club do have other midfield targets that they are looking at. Some big, young potential players that I'm going to speak about in the next News Daily video to let you guys know what's happening behind the scenes. So thank you to you guys who participated. And I want to remind you guys today at 4 p.m. on Ball Street's YouTube channel, there is going to be a Transfer Deadline Day live stream powered by Snickers Protein. It's going to feature so many great fan content creators for the next four hours on Ball Street's YouTube channel. So you guys, make sure you attend that. Make sure you guys participate. Check the stream out. And of course, you guys, while you're at it, why not have a Snickers too? As I said before, shout out to Snickers for sending me a few of these. But now you guys, it is time to discuss transfer deadline day at this club today. We've heard so many reports of potentially Gilmore leaving on loan, Andrew leaving on loan, so many players too. Let's break down the news in regards to what's happening today. Now, starting with Gilmore, and over the past 24 hours, it was rumoured that Gilmore could potentially be going on loan to Southampton. Now, since those reports have broken, it has come out that maybe those reports were a bit overzealous. Gilmore is going to remain at this club, and to be honest, if Gilmore did leave for Southampton, I could have seen that working. You know, Southampton playing that counter-pressing style. You know, I think that would have suited Gilmore's abilities, that would have complemented things very well. And ideally, if you're learning out top young players, you want to find the best possible loan move for them. Anyway, it does seem like Gilmore is going to remain here to compete alongside Jorginho and Quava. And maybe this is the best thing to do in his career at this point in time. Because Tuchel has told him, and this was reported by Matt Law, stating that he does see him getting game time as the season goes on. And it makes a lot of sense. You know, we have so many congested periods as the months do go on. And... You know, it's impossible for guys to play week in, week out. We have a massive squad, tons of depth, and Gilmore has demonstrated that whenever he plays, he does play with quality. Now, now of course, the reason behind these long reports did come out due to the fact that Gilmore has ambitions to represent Scotland in the Euros this summer. However, it's come out suggesting that, of course, the Scotland manager, Steve Clark, our former assistant manager, you know, he's monitoring Gilmore. There are high hopes for him in Scotland and potentially he has a massive opportunity to represent Scotland anyway in the Euros. So for Gilmore, I think this makes a lot of sense. He gets to work alongside Tuchel. He gets to understand the, the setup, the tactics, training. And of course, being under the watchful eye of Tuchel as well, who for me, I could see Gilmore potentially being the variety of this team. So I think this makes sense. I think that Gilmore is going to get game time. And now to move on to another young player that was rumoured to be leaving in this month. I'm speaking about Tino Andrian and similar to Gilmore, he will remain at this club. Now, the reason behind this is that, of course, after discussions with Tuchel as well, Andrian feels personally it makes sense to remain here other than going out on loan. Now, a guy with his potential and his ability, he had offers reported to be from the top half of the championship and from clubs across Europe. So, you know, I can understand why Andrian would feel maybe it's time to remain. You know, he's still very young. And I think just impressing Tuchel, understanding the setup, 
the tactics training. And as I said before, being in that watchful eye of Tuchel could benefit him more in the long term. It's nice to know that Andrew also has that personal ambition that you can fight for a first team sport. And you know, if you want to make it at clubs like this, you need to have that inner source. You know what I mean? You need to have that inner belief in yourself. And that is one thing Andrew definitely has. Considering the systems we are using now, potentially there could be opportunities as the season goes on. But regardless if he gets much game time as the season does continue, just the experience of being able to impress the manager could really benefit him more in the long term of his career. So now we move on to a Livio Giroud and another player that was rumoured potentially to be considering his options. Now we know Giroud for a very long time, he's had personal ambitions to play for France. Uh, it makes a lot of sense. It's probably the final time he can represent his uh, nation before his career comes to an end. And you know, based on the game time he's been receiving, it feels like Giroud now, as it's been reported, is happy to remain here. He feels confident that he will get the game time. And of course, as Didier Deschamps has stressed, Giroud has to play if he wants to uh, be considered to represent France in the Euros. So, you know, I'm cool with this, happily cool with this, because Giroud has been a top quality utility player. is a bit harsh, for sure, but, you know, he's proven that he still is a top-class target man. Now, realistically, this still will remain his final season at the club. Of course, Giroud probably knows this too. And uh, of course, you know, the utmost respects for him. As I say all the time, I can't believe that when we first signed him, I was really against this. This was in the Conte season where I was a bit frustrated with the signings that we made in that second season. And when I was thinking, you know, signing another old player, is this the right move to make? I was happily proven wrong. Giroud's being such a loyal player for us. And now to move on to Emerson. Um, yeah, just quick news out of the way first. He's going to remain as well. I guess maybe I'm a bit confused behind maybe an Emerson or an Alonso Sane. In the sense that we signed Ben in the previous window, we now have three left backs in the team. Yes, I know that Alonso is more of a left wing back, but, you know, he can still play as a left back too. And I feel like one of these guys is destined to get barely any game time. These guys have all been international players. I'm sure Emerson has hopes for the Italian squad too. And, you know, it does feel like, again, we haven't seen it being used by Tuchel at this point in time. And it does feel like maybe this could potentially cost them, in my personal opinion. Um, interesting that we're keeping on board three left backs. Let's see what happens. But it's weird considering that both players like your Emerson's and Alonso's have had tons of interest over the past, what, 18 months for a very long time. And... You know, we weren't able to find any agreements to let one of these guys leave. So let's see how that does play out. And to end with the final player, and that is Willy Caballero. Now, of course, you know, he's a bit frustrated at this point in time with the lack of game time. I was actually considering options as it was reported, you know, uh, to consider options in the MLS. Now, of course, his age makes a lot of sense. However, the club have put a stop to that. And the reason behind that is due to the fact that if anything happens to a Mendy or if anything happens to a Kepa, then of course, you need to have a top quality backup goalkeeper there. And of course, it's a shame for Caballero, but that's kind of part and parcel of this business, you know? It's what happens uh, when you sign for clubs like this. You kind of low-key know what to expect. And, you know, of course, once the season does end, I'm sure that he probably will be moved on. He probably will look to, you know, find more consistent game time elsewhere. And to be honest, he's been another player that when he has been called upon, you can rely upon him. And I guess that's always uh, the best thing to have. So so there you have it, you guys. A pretty uneventful transfer deadline day. It made a lot of sense. I mean, realistically, were we going to be in the market to sign any players right now? Probably not. Considering, too, that Tuchel, now that he's come in during the halfway point of the season, you want to just keep a happy dynamic in the squad. To introduce some of your players right now would not be the best thing to do at this point in time. It's all about galvanising the players you have boosting their confidence, raising their spirits, because every one of these guys could play a decisive part, as was proven by Marcus Alonso in the game versus Burnley, and in our hopes to get a top four spot come the end of the season. So I do feel like I understand why Tuchel has, you know, decided to keep all the players in the squads. Yes, I'm sure as the season does go on, some of these guys will be getting less minutes and less minutes. However, it's about finding the form right now. It's about building the confidence, building that momentum, and you know, this month is going to be a very testing month. The game against Spurs is going to be one of Tuchel's first big tests since he signed for us. And, you know, after seeing that performance against Burnley, I mean, even though we always play well against Burnley recently, 
I'm really curious to see and very excited to see what Tuchel is going to continue to do with this squad as the season goes on. Can he get us a top four spot? I feel confident about that. And you guys, on that note, I'm going to wrap things up and keep things moving. Thank you for watching. I'm EFC. This is Blue Lions TV. I'll catch you guys later with some more videos.